Hello, welcome to the first of a three-part series of interviews by Team Fortress TV. My name's Sideshow and throughout these interviews I'm going to be joined by players from the top three teams in ETF2L Season 19 powered by TTE Sports. Those teams are in reverse seedings, the Nuts and Rollerbladers, the Berichon de Chateau, and Uber Sexuals. Tonight I'm going to be talking to Zebesai and Hair P, the scouts from Zinuts and Rollerbladers. This team squeezed into the playoffs in third place after a very promising start to the season, but can be very inconsistent, as they've shown by dropping maps to significantly lower skilled teams. So hello, welcome, Hair P, Zebesai, thanks for joining me here. I'd like to start off with a question, if I may, directed towards Zebesai. I'll leave your scout partner, Hair P, just in the shadows for a, a little moment. Zebesai, how do you feel like the season went for your team? Uh, it started off good. Um, when we had Qnix, we played quite aggro. Then we got uh, AMS instead. And we, like he played a more passive role. But towards the end, we uh, swapped, so he plays more aggressive. We play two scouts closer to Medic. And today it worked fine, but the uh, last weeks before this it's been really bad. Do you feel disappointed about your incredibly close third place finish? Or are you just happy to get into the playoffs? Well, we were disappointed that we had to rely on uh, main call to get the playoff, because we should have made it on our own. But about the third place, or, it doesn't really matter if we're first, second or third. So, happy, your spot in the limelight now. How do you feel the changes that your team has made over the course of the season have affected the overall performance? Uh, I don't know about overall team performance. Like, we've, we've changed our dynamic almost every week, which I guess has been... Like, we, we've had uh, to work a lot on solving problems, and it's been a bit uh, embarrassing to, like, see things not working. Like, when we lost a map where school clan was pretty bad. But uh, from my side, it's been like I've jumped around four positions, something like that now. To try to fix it and now I'm kind of in a spot where I'm comfortable again and it just feels like this is kind of the way we're playing now is probably the way we've been looking for the whole season. So you feel like this is the pinnacle of your team's performance right now as you go into the playoffs? I wouldn't say pinnacle but I would say the one with most potential at least like you always need training and you'll always get better with time but this is like the one that won't make us break up within two days of and hate each other. So I guess perhaps that little comment at the end there referring to your attempts to on-class again? What was it, a, a few weeks ago, bringing Zebeside back onto pocket? What happened there, Zeb? Well, we were just like desperate for results. We, we thought we would beat Kulka anyway, I guess. I guess we were too cocky. And we figured, we'd, let's try this before playoffs, because we still got time. Uh, but yeah, we were just very desperate for results, because it wasn't working out for us. Yeah, you had this spate of results in the latter half of the season, just after your Uber Sexuals game, where you dropped a map to Eshock and then dropped a map to 425, and as you said, then ended up dropping a, a map to Cool Clan as well. Do you feel like you can pin that on a specific thing that happened? Mm, well, our main unit in general, like the calls and leadership there, has been pretty weak. Like, Uber's a very silent player in general. And so is AMS, and he's totally new to this. Uh, and Knut's on it. It's the first time for him calling as well. But yeah, now that we have two Agro Solis and um, like Rip is trying to step up on the calls, it's working better, but we'll see. How do you feel about this um, kind of way that BK has been branded as all of these guys at the top of Prem off classing? Do you feel like you are off-classing? Do you feel like this is the the best that you could do? Or are you still going to go back to pocket and destroy everybody afterwards? Well, when I did the swap, we planned uh, to keep it that way for like Season 20 because we heard it was uh, going to be big. Uh, but of course, it went way worse with me on pocket. Like, if we gave it more time, maybe it was, was going to be better in the end. But I think we're sticking with this uh, now. Like, Sap is a very good roamer and I do an okay job on Scout too, so this works just fine. So um, I actually want to ask some questions about the Scout role, because um, Zebesai, obviously you have this, probably the most aggressive Scout style in the whole of Prem at the moment. You constantly running in, getting 40 frags, 10k damage all the time. Hey P, you are left as the little bitch to cap the points. Doesn't that wind you up, being left as the human pain train? I said I was okay with it. I think the phrase I've used a lot of times is that I... I don't have ego, but I have pride in what I do, and I think uh, I've kind of been trying to find a way to play and still be able to be kind of a backbone to the team and still be able to personally perform, which I kind of found both versus eShock in 425, where like the 100 point game versus eShock was really nice to play, 
And that's kind of the style I'm trying to emulate now of being a bit more aggressive and dragging nuts on with me, but still like giving time for others to probably shine more. So I'm all right with it. Like I've nev- never been one to have a big ego and take places in a team. How do you feel on the flip side of that, playing with Zebesai is, he is going to be the kind of scout partner that's not always there to get your back if he's constantly in the fray and, uh, and not going to be holding down those those defensive kind of positions. How have you had to adapt your playstyle to put up with Zebesai? I played in a lot of teams where I've never really found this uh, duo of scouts, like where which is kind of like the legendary thing spoken of of scout partners and stuff like that. But I've played with a lot of scouts by now, and it's it's never been like that for me. Uh, having a greater connection with other scouts, but it's always been like connection with the demo, connection with the the pocket, something like that. So for me, this is kind of business as usual, of just seeing Sebo run away and like getting out of the way, so I can have fun with my friends instead. <laughs> How how do you two feel the team dynamic really works in your team? You mentioned there are some like partnerships between different classes. Do you feel like you have um, a, a particular way in which your team likes to play? We like to play aggressive, and I think it's been at times it's been stupidly aggressive, and like how we're playing now with kind of Sebo actually a bit toned down for the first time ever is uh, a bit more kind of sane aggression. And uh, I think you just we, we're playing with a lot of energy. You know, it's uh, ho- hopefully you will have comps for the playoffs or something like that, so you can hear us scream at each other. But uh, if we have a quiet day, we play bad. But if we have like a really loud day, that's when we play really good. What is the mumble atmosphere like overall, Zeb? Um, well, yeah, Knut on screaming, but I think the rest of us kind of like sewn out from that, so we don't really hear him because uh, we're so used to it. But like we joke all the time. It's a very friendly mumble atmosphere, so it's good. Is it Nutson that does the main calling for your team? Well, that's the plan, yeah. Um, but uh, we discussed that last week and wanted to try to get the Rib uh, more involved too. Like that was the main thing, I guess, with me going pocket, so we had more reliable comms. And we felt more like as a team uh, when I played pocket, but uh, yeah, the, the results, uh, we didn't get them there either. And we'd already played a full season with me and Scout, so I just swapped back. Okay, so I have this image in my head as Rib of kind of this silent destroyer that just goes through the game without speaking a word but tearing everybody up. Is that about right, or is he able to come a bit more than that? Maybe take the lead? Well, no, that is uh, correct. But like last week we discussed it and I said, I need, well, we need someone to step up and help Knutson on the comms. And then it was either AMS or Rib. And we didn't want AMS to play uh, close to Knutson again, like uh, Pocket Roll, want to, to be aggro. So Rib said uh, he'll try to do it, and today, uh, first time we tried it, it worked fine, so hopefully it continues that way. How have you two found AMS? Um, obviously slightly less experienced than the rest of your team. He's come up from, was it Division 3? To play at the top of Prem on his yeah. pocket roll. How, how have you found his ability to cope with that jump in skill? Um, to be honest, I did expect more from him. Like He's been improving slowly, but these last few weeks when we swapped his role, He's really been putting out damage and helping us, but before that, uh, yeah, I didn't, like, I don't know, I expected a lot more from him, but uh, he's improving, like, slowly, and these last weeks he's really stepped it up, so it should be good for the future. How do you feel like your style of play matches up to LBC and Ubersexuals? Um, I think our play works better versus LBC, because it's quite scrappy, and, like, they don't have that leadership either in their team, I don't think. I don't know, I don't understand French, but it seems that we're playing them. Uh, well, main call, they have like Ips uh, really microing them. So it's hard to get these like 1v1s and all the just, and that's what we look for most of the game. So I think uh, our place that works better versus uh, LBC. Whereas Ubersexuals are able to anticipate the Zebusai throwing himself around a choke and just use that as a pick. Well, I guess, I don't know. I think you're going to see a different Zebusai in the, in the playoffs, though. A different Zebusai in the playoffs. Yeah. That would be an absolute gift sent from heaven, wouldn't it, Happy? What What are the plans there? Well, he claimed that he was playing more uh, laid back and uh, passive today. And then it turned out that he had like 50 frags and 18 deaths or something like that. <laughs> so I don't really know like if either he's an amazing cleaner or he's just bullshitting us and it's the same shit all over again. But uh, yeah, we're playing uh, both of us 
closer to Knutsson and using him more as a base of aggression instead of Sebosai being aggressive on the flank, which just gives us such uh, the main unit just gets so much stronger in just having his same close to the rest of us, which really, really, really helps. Um, you mentioned Zappis there as well. Zappis, of course, is new to the Roman role, but he's really impressed me and a lot of other people with how he's been able to pick up the basics of it and, and really progress incredibly well over this season. Um, how do you guys feel like he's adapted to the Roma role, having come from Scout? Well, I remember Zappis as a scout in Seacrest, an old team. Then I thought it was an amazing scout. But since then, he's taken a lot of breaks, like Army and all that shit, so I don't know. Towards the end, his scout wasn't that great, and I feel his Romer is uh, a lot better. Like, it's very good, his Romer, um, especially for the first season he's playing, like, soldier ever. Like, he's only played scout in all his seasons. It took us uh, quite a while to get him to admit that he was better on Romer than scout. Like, the first couple of weeks, we used to tell him how amazing he was when he played scout, when he played soldier instead. And it would just be, no, no, my scout is amazing. <laughs> and then he just posts his amazing stats uh, as a Roam instead. And now, now it's just, okay, maybe I'm an okay Roamer. <laughs> so he's finally got the self-confidence that he needs. With Zappis streaming all of your strategies as well, are you, are you skeptical of your chances? Are you full of confidence? What's going on there? Considering we don't have any strategies... I think that anyone that watches the stream will just get like, aha, yeah, they have this amazing mid they play here. And instead it's just us kind of showing up and winging it from there. <laughs> so Yeah, we don't really plan stuff, we just do it in the game. We're very, we don't really have the strats and shit. We're very, very reactive, which is kind of like the word for being too lazy with strats. And um, Zebesai, you, Rib and Nutsen have played at the top of the scene before. I think I'm right in saying that, that uh, the rest of the team kind of hasn't played at that top four level before, really. Um, well, Knutsen has done it one season in Osomniak, and never ever for that. Uh, but, yeah, okay, so Nutsen's not Nutsen. quite on your level, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and Rib. Okay, we'll leave Nutsen out of this then. So uh, you and Rib have played in the ETF2L playoffs before. What do you think about the, the switch from it being kind of a two-week thing that's all drawn out to being a very condensed one-day event? I, I like that a lot. I just uh, feel like we should have, we should be able to get the fourth team in. Like, say, first team play fourth, then second play third, and then winner of that in the grand final. I think I'd enjoy that a lot more uh, with four teams, but I like it in one day. So something like an ESEA LAN kind of event is what you're picturing in your head? Well, yeah, I don't know if ESEA uses that. I know some certain sports do and uh, stuff like that. But like in general, like the first seed should get to the final anyway, so it shouldn't hurt too much. And they get the map advantage and the normal stuff. Do you know what this is? This is the ETF2L admins screwing everything up again and killing <laughs> TF2. Damn you, Permzilla! I'm the German admin team. Hiding their German players from bands or whatever that ric uh, ridiculous quote is. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on from bashing on the admin team. So I've discussed it briefly just before this, but what do you reckon your chance of actually getting into the grand finals and then your chance of actually winning the whole thing? If you had to place a figure on it, if you had to give me odds on saloon.tf. I'd say from my part, it feels like if you play like we did today, and if... Uh... <laughs> Uber sexuals play like they did today, it's an easy win. But if they play like they usually do, and if LBLC plays like they usually do, it's anyone's game. But it feels like whenever we play against LBLC, we just feel way more confident. And we just kind of step it up a notch, it feels like for officials too, while they don't do that as much. So I'm pretty confident against them, and then you have to play main call, which basically means that. Yeah, it's it's a tougher team, and I'd say that from my part it's like a 60-40 in their favor. And then we're gonna get absolutely wrecked on two maps in a row, and everyone is gonna tease me about it, but I'm gonna stand by that. <laughs> and Zebesai, what do you reckon? Uh, has Happy hit the nail on the head? You guys are gonna be able to smash LBC, but you're gonna struggle against ubersexuals? No, I, I think we'll smash LBC and then uh, make it close versus ubersexuals, but we'll win that too. 60-40 to us. bringing out the big predictions. So, Zebesai, hey P, do you feel like the other teams that you're going to be playing against have certain styles of play? And if you can give us a little insight into your games against them, 
How do you feel like you manipulate that in order to win? Yeah, I think when it comes to the friendships, it just feels like we're in a lot of ways trying to play the same playstyle, and we're kind of outplaying them on it. Like we're butting heads with the scouts while the soldiers fly in, and at least today it just feel, felt like they were kind of making mistakes we made a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know how the team coercion was for them, but they definitely didn't really impress when it came to that style. So I think it's just ubersexuals play a different style than us, while we kind of do the same thing as the Frenchies. And in the end, I don't think it's down to style, but it's just down to the individual players in the playoff. Like who, who has a good day and who be, will be permitted to have a good day by the other team. And will you be focusing anybody in particular to stop them having a good day? I'm gonna smash rising because, you know, we're old pals. But then I'm gonna try to, like, when I play Ubersex Shots, it's just mainly I don't ever get to touch the scouts because they're finicky little bastards, and instead I just dominate both soldiers, despite only having 12 frags or something like that. So I tend to focus the soldiers while Sebusai gets to kill the scouts. And I think it's it might work out. I feel in both teams, like, their strongest part is their rover. So, like, if we can, especially in Mankel's uh, team, like, if we can shut down uh, Rising, uh, I think we'll be fine. Because, like, if we shut down T-Mac, they have, like, tech in that other team. The x one jumping, it's a lot of aggression from the Frenchies, but for Mankel, it's pretty much only, like, Rising, especially on middle. So, if we can shut him down, I think we should be fine. And you mentioned as well that you thought that Ubersexuals had a different style of play to yours and LBCs. How would you describe that then? You said you play with um, your, your scouts butting heads and soldiers flying in. Give us a little bit more insight there. You just teased us. <laughs> yeah, I think, just think that it's... Uh, I don't know, we talked about it today and we said that we played a more traditional style. And I don't really know about that because I don't know what the traditional style was. But it feels like when it comes to Ubersexuals, while well, we might throw in both soldiers and a scout or something like that to resolve a situation. They just kind of throw in the rising and see what happens. And then based on that, they kind of try to go in after it. And instead we just kind of try to overwhelm them at once. And it's they're playing a more safe style and not as momentum heavy style while we are kind of betting a lot on getting the momentum and then trying to keep it by just keep smashing players into them. Yeah, I think we are a lot, both us and French are like folks more on our DM. Those kind of fights, just scrappy fights, while well, uh, all ubersexuals play like it's more teeth to you know sacking one player, stacking the other five together, like, just slow was more teeth to boring teeth. To... So what you're saying is you and the Frenchies are all aim no brain, and yeah. uh, the others are boring. Yeah, pretty much. You mentioned about the Romas. Who are you most worried about on LBC and ubersexuals? If you had to give me a player that you would permanently cripple so they they couldn't play in the playoffs. Who would it be? Um, Flippy Sniper. Uh, but if Flippy isn't Sniper, then it's for sure T Mac for LBC. And for Ubersexuals, it's Rising. Like, he's the standout player in that team for me. Yeah, for my side, it's. Uh, if uh, for some reason LDLC, the, or LDLC, uh, if they bring out uh, Captain Hacks, because he's been a really fucking impressive pocket this season. If they bring him out, I'm a bit scared, but otherwise it feels like I don't have a problem with butting heads with the scouts in that team, and it's just kind of the roamer does a lot of work, and Exxon comes flying in, but that's kind of, if you play smart, that's easy for Ags, while Ubisex is kind of, you have to shut down Rising because his jumps are just so much more timed, and then after that, like, they try to play off him, and if he's not allowed to play at all, then you just kill them afterwards in a 6v5. I'm sorry, can I back you up there a second? <laughs> Did you just say to me that if LBC use their sub, Captain Hacks, instead of Tech, the incredible Tech? Yeah. Is it wow. Tech Scout? Or, um, the... Tech scouted when Captain Hacks was solid, but Captain Hacks okay, okay. has been really, really good this season. On yeah. The, uh, on Soldier. I I'm famous for, I think I lifted the Tech and targeted him like five times at LAN, but I still feel like uh, Captain Hacks, has, when he has played, he has played kind of pulled them back and done the same thing that Ips kind of does with Dubish Excels, just try to play them smarter, and that's just way more deadly to have him in the game then, than to just have kind of the tech even though he has better DM. So you mentioned earlier in the interviews, Ebisai, that 
you had created this team and gone through season 19 with a view of looking forwards uh, to the future, towards season 19, uh, <laughs> towards season 20, sorry. And um, you're thinking of sticking around. Is that what's going to happen no matter what the playoff story ends up unfolding as? Uh, yep, that, that's the plan. Unless something like unexpected happens personally to any player, but like we're all like good friends. Like that was the main thing with making this team. Like me, Sabbath Knutson really like playing with each other in Osomniac. Uh, and then P is nice and I've played with Rib uh, a lot of times before because they messed in new guy, but he fits in good too. So yeah, we're planning to like we want to go to Lance. Like that's our goal. I see. You're the new super team that the EU needs to take down Froyo Tech. Is that what's is that what's happening here? I wouldn't say super team, but I wouldn't say super to team. Third place, Sevo. Third place. <laughs> what hope does Europe have? They have uber sexuals. If they stick together. What do you think about those other two teams? Do you think they'll be sticking around as well? What do you think Europe's going to look like after season 19? I don't know about the LBC. Uh, like, uh, they weren't planning to play this season, if I'm not wrong. Like, they have a lot of school and stuff, but I really hope they stick around because uh, we need a good friendship team. And. Uh, Ruby Sexual feel like, feels like that team, if the results aren't with them, they can just fold. Uh, but the results should be with them, and then they will probably stick around. I feel like Land would be really trying for Ruby Sexual just because the personalities, you know? Like, compared to us having a bad day and getting shooed out by Sebosai and me screaming at him, that's kind of happens one. I think it's happened once, like over, what is it, three months or something like that. And compare that to having to be in Mumble with Dips and War. Which is kind of, from my experience, limited experience, a bit more of a toxic death trap. <laughs> so, wh while they, I don't know who has more potential to play good at LAN, but I think that they have more potential to at least get really mad at each other and end up shanking someone in their sleep. So, do you think the other two teams take you seriously as a threat? Well, listening to Ubisoft's interview of the issue, they don't. I think LBC does, though. Like, uh, but we've always played close games versus them, even when like, we played shit versus other teams. LBC has always been close, but we're so similar in play style, it just comes down to the game. But the Uber Sectors don't take us, uh, take us as a threat at all, I don't think. I don't think Uber Sectors are capable of taking anyone as a threat, to be honest. That's kind of like, you know, the ego come behind and it can help, just having that confidence. And is that a good thing, or is that going to bite them in the ass? I don't know. I refer back to my kind of LAN answer. Like, it might bite them in their ass to get too much ego, but I think they have kind of... They've justified it, they've played in good teams before, and uh, they're strong personalities, and they'll hopefully stick around and see through. Interesting. Well, just to round this off then, I am going to be conducting an interview with LBC's own Medic Bull. Um, after this, which will be released in a few days' time, and I am also going to be doing an interview with the Ubersexuals, Pocket, and Demoman, Ips, and War. So, Heppy, Zebasai, do you have any questions for them? If they can be as shit talky as you like, and I will add them on to the end, and they will have to answer. Give me your questions for LBC or Ubersexuals. I'd like to ask Bull why he isn't returning my nudes. <laughs> and. <laughs> I'd less like to ask Ips why he's such a giant as hat as times. Have have some nice, nice in you. That that wasn't a full sentence, but like be 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 nice, Ips. Sometimes it will help you in life. I don't have any questions for any of them. Who would well, I don't care about the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Zebasai and Herr P for taking the time out to talk to me. And thank you as well, listener, for sticking around to listen to all of our drivel as we went on and on. It's been slightly longer than I intended it to be, but hopefully you've got a decent insight now into how BK Zinuts and Rollerbladers really plays and uh, their team dynamic, etc, etc. Admirable will be pumping out some articles. I may even dabble on the old typewriter myself. And we are going to be producing a lot of hype content in the run-up to these ETF2L Season 19 powered by TT Esports playoffs. Catch us on Sunday for the playoffs in their entirety. A full day jam-packed full of some amazing TF2, the best that European TF2 has to offer. We'll see you then on Team Fortress TV.